Welcome to another star-studded edition of Top of the Pops. This is my friend Mike Smith. And we got bands from all over the place tonight. Scottish bands, Welsh singers, and of course the London lads. Here is Modern Romance. Woo-hoo! I know what you need. Can you hear me? No, what's happening here? Hey, good morning. Hang on, let me just turn up some uh, stuff. One sec. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. All right. Let me get, make sure everything's up and running all right. All right. Well, Let's see, so it's 10 o'clock in the morning there. It's 3 o'clock in the morning here. <laughs> well, this is the way things go. When you're, an, when you're, you know, an international interviewer like you are, you know, then what can I say? It, it's all just part of, all part of the game, you know? How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, actually. Not bad. I was, um, I was in the middle of some DIY to, to a little while ago. I, I did it yesterday, and I, could do, I was painting, and I thought I'd do another coat this morning, and I did a little bit, and I thought, well, I haven't got time to finish it, so I just left it. I thought I'd go back later and do it. Nice. So, what are you painting? Um, I'm painting the doors of my – I took them off, but I'm painting the doors of my outdoor kitchen. Oh, okay. Um, to make them all blend in with everything that's gone. So I took them in the house to do it because it's just warmer and nicer, and they're a dry cooker as well. Cool, cool, cool. I've got an outdoor kitchen kind of barbecue area. It's all covered. So I, I did a barbecue when it was absolutely chucking it down. And people went, well, how are you going to do it? I said, don't worry, come around. I said, weather doesn't bother me now. Come around. And I've got this thing outside. It's all covered. Um, and it looks, it's great. It's, it's, I mean, it's something I started during lockdown. I did okay. the first part of it. And then I did the, the second part where I decided, well, I've done a barbecue area, but I need a fridge. And a freezer and a and then oven and a tumble and a dishwasher so they're all out there now sort of they're, they're, it's yeah, almost yeah. fixed yeah awesome. so yeah, the, the idea is you cook I, I this is one something i want to do for years and i thought why do people do this we, we have a barbecue and you lug everything from the house outside all the crockery and everything and then you have to take it back inside to wash it and it's like what a pain i thought no now Everything can stay outside. I've got so we have a barbecue, it goes in the dishwasher, we go inside, I go up to bed, switch it on, come back in the morning, unload it, put it in the cupboards, nothing goes in the house. Very, Very cool. That that makes total sense to me. Yep. So do, you, do you do a lot of barbecue and then? Um Greek Cypriots. We love our Greek barbecue, so it's like massive chunks of lamb and pork and all these other little spicy little sausages and all these things that we do. So, yeah, we can cool. get it there, actually. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I was trying to think, actually, I was talking with one of my best friends earlier. I was trying to remember. It's been a little over, actually, it's been almost, no, it has. It's actually been just about a year since we were on last. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. Halloween was coming up, and we talked a little bit about Halloween last time. So it has been a year. Okay. Wow. Wow. And uh, what a year it's been. A lot has changed on this end. What's uh, actually, how about we get started with the interview and I'll just introduce you. And, oh, okay. All right. Okay. People know who we're hanging out with. Yeah. Hey, guys. I love, the, I love the pictures of the cats behind you. Who did those? Yeah, they, I love it. I love it. Speaking of painting, actually, Andy, right about the time we talked last year, I just started painting. Um, I was working on a um, restoration project of some of my dad's uh, 
uh, rocking horses from his company way back in the day. And I haven't stopped. Actually, um, I've been selling paintings as I've gone. Um, I left Washington uh, on September 1st. So the state that I grew up in and was born in and all that, I can't afford to live in anymore. And so I headed south and I'm now in New Mexico. Wow. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Actually, let me get another drink of coffee. I'll tell you, yes, I realize international interviewer, my foot. <laughs> <laughs> but I do put it out there to my special guests that I'll work around you regardless of what time of day. So I need to remember that. Anyway, no, thank you very much for putting some time aside. I totally appreciate oh, it. Oh, pleasure. But <laughs> My brain's just thinking. I wrote a children's book for 1996, 97. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's the, it's the, in my mind, it's the first in a series of books. You can do a whole series. Okay. First one I've done is the one where you introduce all the characters. And the characters are cats. Really? Now, somebody actually, somebody who, does cartoons for uh, the Evening Standard or one of these, I can't remember which paper it is, but somebody who does cartoons for one of the big newspapers here, okay. Guardian, might be the Guardian, um, initially drew some pictures for me, which yeah. I still got. And I said, if I ever publish it as a book, I'll use these pictures. That I went to the picture of the main character, the main cat. Right. Drew some pictures for me. And I've kept them in a file and I've never done anything with it because it's one of those things where... Um, I'm just having a time because I'm doing music. And right. I'd love, to, I'd love to do something with it, and it's always been at the back of my mind. One day I'm going to do something with that. One day I will. I think it's a great. I mean, I know I'm biased because I wrote it, but I think it's a great idea and a great way to introduce young children to um, modern, not just modern society because they're in within the society, but modern issues like. Um, as opposed to the fire fireman just being a fireman to right. find out how the fire service works but in right. a childish way so they understand it to okay. find out how the police what the police do in the community not just policemen they don't just arrest the baddies but they do other things and right. all different issues um, and so each book could be about you know this okay. character okay. I mean PC plod whatever right right um, and I've never done anything with it because, as I said, I've been too immersed in music and doing stuff. Um, but having seen the cats, I think, oh, no, they're, they're a bit aristocratic. Um, um, yeah, but I sort of think, oh, I wonder uh, if I could sit with you one day and chat about um, the character, uh, you know, just to, just to have a cat that's... I, I want this to be, you know, like Paddington Bear. You know who Paddington Bear is? With the hat and the range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. Everyone knows who you is straight away. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with, yeah. Everyone knows who you is straight away. Right. Kermit, Kermit the Frog. Everyone knows straight away who Kermit is. Or Miss Piggy. Right. I want, I want this cat to be instantly recognisable that when they see him, oh, they're Humphrey. Not just a cat. Okay. Just a, for example, not just a teddy bear. You know it's Paddington Bear. You know it's Rupert. You know it's whatever. Right, right. So, um, that's something we could maybe chat about another time when we're not doing this. Well, I, well yeah, I would be totally interested in that, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, usually for me, when somebody, because I'll do commission paintings, and when somebody gives me an idea, it's usually a matter of seconds, and I already know what it is that I want to do. Um, whether it, it comes close to the finished product or not and all that. Uh, yeah everywhere back in the 60s and 70s. Andy, I'd totally be down for that. So let's um, let's plan on doing that here in the near future then. Um, yeah. Whether you reach out to me or vice versa. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll touch base with you about that. 
All right. Um, I thought my cousin Robin uh, was going to be on with us this morning, but she must be um, sawing logs, Thanks, and sir. that's totally fine. Hey, guys, you are watching Convos here on the Groove Zone Network. I'm DJD Phoenix coming to you out of New Mexico this morning. And with me, I've got the pleasure, of getting, got the pleasure to, of getting a chance to hang again for a little while with Andy Kiriakou of Modern Romance. Andy, how are you? Oh, well, thank you. And it's so nice. You actually said the name correctly, Kiriaku. I get so many variations, but yes. I went through, I went over and over that in my head earlier today. And I'm like, you know, I really do know how it's pronounced. So <laughs> let, let's pronounce it right. You know, it's like, yeah. Um, how are you? Oh, well, thank you. Very well. How about you? Good. I'm doing well. Um, we were just talking a minute ago. It's been about a year since you were on the show with us last time. And um, I'm a imagining and even from seeing some of your posts on uh, the social network um it's been a pretty busy year again for you uh it has been pretty busy um it's very nice to to be busy because we're still we're still feeling the effects i think of covid people are still tentative when it comes to booking shows and will okay. people come and have people got the money now as well because you know it's not a case of Will people, I think people have gotten over that initial fear of, oh, we're going to go and get COVID. I don't think people are worried about that anymore. It's right. more, a case, more a case of, um, do we have the money? Because so many things have happened financially throughout the world and everyone's been affected. So you've got people that saying, well, do I really want to pay this much money to go to a concert when I really have to feed my kids or do so? Totally right. understandable. So, and, and then of course the promoters are thinking, well, are, am I going to fill this venue? Or am I going to, you know, uh, make a loss on this so everyone's still being a bit tentative but there there is work we're you know we're getting there every everyone's kind of breathed a sigh of relief i know i have because uh, oh, yeah. financially it was a, a dire time so it's nice to look back on, on last year and uh you know and, and th you know this year so far we're nearly at the end of the year and go well actually you know we're on the right track we we're as close to back to normal as you could be um right which is great and, and I think that's kind of how it is across the board for most artists. I know some some artists are a lot busier and definitely more steady, almost on a weekly basis, um, just getting it out there, trying to you know either regain some finances or whatever. But you mentioned something a minute ago though too, which is you know the way that COVID affected everything. I remember conversations that I was having with some of our guests where we were still at that point where nobody knew when the venues were going to open back up, if they would open back up. So the fact that we're where we are now, um, you know, really says a lot. But you're right, though, because um, venue owners are still kind of at that point where it's like, you know, we can't fill a full, we can't fill a state. Modern Romance, though, like you guys, you were able to kind of jump on some of the different like um, 80s retro festivals, though. Yeah. OK. And I think that that probably has helped a little bit. What's um, what's one of your latest shows? Um, we're doing we've got one coming up this not this weekend, the following weekend. Okay. We're doing 80s weekend as a, as a holiday place. I don't know if you know called Butlins. OK. Um, and they have. 80s weekenders, they do 70s as well with different things, but right. they take it off in a massive way in these places. Um, they have the whole weekend dedicated, people pay to go and stay there the whole weekend, and you'll get Tony Hadley and um, Nick Kershaw on Friday, wow. and then Modern Romance and Tapao on Saturday, and, nice. then someone, and then someone else on Sunday. Okay. Um, so you pay for the whole weekend, you've got, you've got and you'll, you'll get and you'll get known DJs as well, DJing in between. So the whole weekend is one big party, one big, um, you know, 80s fest. How cool. 
and it's great. I mean, they're great. They're absolutely brilliant fun. They're they're just as much fun, uh, in it, but in a different way to the festivals because people are there for the weekend for the whole weekend, and um, what we choose to do is we stay overnight. They give us accommodation, and the accommodation is quite nice. It's lovely to stay, but. What we tend to do is, because we stay overnight, we go and have breakfast in the morning with the public, which is always a shock, because they're like, oh, you, you were performing last night, yeah. Oh, you're having breakfast with us, oh, get it. And we just sit and chat to people and have breakfast, and it's fantastic, and then we leave, it's great. Right, right. But, but these shows are very lucrative for Butlins. Uh, that's why they put them on. They they obviously do very well. Right. And, you know, it's, it's a great thing to be a part of. They're really, really good. I'll bet. And I, I would imagine that the atmosphere backstage um, has to be totally fun, being able to catch up with some of these friends from years ago, maybe that you haven't gotten a chance to see in a while. Um, just being on that kind of a lineup, too, um, you know, because back in the day, speaking of filling stadiums, every single one of those artists that you just mentioned filled stadiums, you know, um, it might have been a while, but I think that's one of the reasons though, why I think that it's so cool that the whole 80s retro thing has seen that Kids, full long research. Who knows, who, who it's like, who know who the artists are? Yeah, no, there are. I mean, I, I, I'm often, when I'm on stage and looking out, and even, but especially at fe it, well, the festivals and these 80s things, you get kids that, well, say kids, you get people that are like 24, 25, and you can see the mouthing, they're singing the songs, and you think, well, how do you know this? You weren't even born when this was out. But obviously, they've been brought up on 80s music from their parents, just like my kids. My kids know 80s music inside out, you know. Right. And obviously, they know all the today stuff, but they know all the 80s stuff because they're brought up on it and they actually like it as well. So they, right. so I can, I can see how that filters through to the kids. No doubt. Well, you know, when it comes, I don't know, I think some of us are a bit biased, but when it comes to like the whole 80s and new wave and alternative um, realm, I think we kind of felt like we were the cool kids. You know, our music was better than the generation before. And, you know, it would definitely be better than anything still to come. And, um, you know, modern romance is, is definitely in that. I have to say, for me, it's a 50-50 split because... I was brought up in, I started going out in the 70s. Right. Um, and the, oh, the whole 70s music scene, especially when the soul and the disco explosion, I was a big soul fan, big, massive, still am. Um, so when that thing kind of took off and I was listening to it and I was in the clubs and dancing away and listening to all these songs, um, that had a special place for me, always has, always will do. But then obviously the 80s are special because I was part of the 80s. I was part of that whole thing. So for me, it's a split between the two. Although I, I have to say, the one thing about the 80s that makes it unique and makes it stand out from the 70s is that in the 70s, the, I mean, the music was fantastic. Some of the music yeah. was yeah. awesome. You know, the, you can go anywhere from the Bee Gees, Santana. There was just so much going on. The soul, whole, as I said, the whole soul explosion, disco explosion. Yeah. Some great sort of um you know avant-garde music that was happening at the time the thing about the 80s the 80s kind of the 80s music had a face and i say that in that bands that you didn't even like or weren't even sure about but you knew what they looked like because right. the, the 80s had more of an image when it came to the music now, no, even I now I, I look yeah. at musicians yeah, now. Now, bands and i kind of think most of them all look the same right um, and, and for example, you've got bands like um, in, in the later stage, you've got Busted, McFly, and um, all the, the, some of the stuff my kids listen to, which is great music. Don't get me wrong, music is fantastic. I was listening last night. My son's had a playlist game while he was cooking in the kitchen. Okay. I was painting in the in the living room, put some stuff into paint. So I'm listening to his playlist, and I thought, bloody hell, there are some great songs here. But all those bands. Um, if you looked at them and said, well, unless you actually were a fan of that band, if you looked at them and said, well, which band's he in which, well, I don't know. But if you looked at members of bands, like if you looked at, if, if someone said, look, here's a band, here's a bunch of people dressed like this, and here's a bunch of people dressed like this, which band would you put this person in? You'd go, well, he's in that band because he's got that image, they've got that image. Right. Now, and I know the image isn't 
image should not be what sells a band, but, but it does, because we judge and we look at people and we are attracted to a look. And it's just nice to, if you've got something that makes you stand out aesthetically, we don't have that these days very often. Right, right. Um, okay, what's wrong with my thing? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you, but you've okay. uh, done a very good Marcel, yeah. Marcel, you're just standing there. Oh, there, you're moving there. No okay, joke. Cool. Got a little concern there. I got frozen there for a second, and I don't know why. Okay. Um, yes, we are attracted to um, image. As soon as you said that, the first thing that I thought about was um, Duran Duran. Yep, suits. That whole look, yeah. Totally. But then again, though, for that matter, um, Modern Romance were some pretty sharp dressers themselves. Thank you. Yeah, we we did we yeah we had our moments. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't remember. I want to say was it High Life? Um, there was one of the um, one of the videos that you guys did, and I believe that you're all dressed in silver suits. Silver suits, yeah. That's okay, it. yeah, and you're running down the stairs, and it, you know, as a as a music fan, especially at that point in time, it totally takes me back to that whole Haiti of the early to mid '80s when it was when it really was, it was just like one big effing party mm. and that, you know, the, the atmosphere and everything. And, and I think for me and for so many of my friends and um, our generation, it was so bright and so different and so, but same at time, the same time, edge. cutting edge, you know, you know? Um, regardless, I still remember modern romance. And I think one of the things, and we might've hit on this last time we talked, but, um, they, you guys never quite broke the states in the way that a lot of other bands did. And I don't know. It seems to me that when you and I talked last time, I think that it might have had something to do maybe with the timing, um, possibly. But I know, that, I know that the band itself, especially back at that point in time, though, was going through an awful lot of um, not only lineup changes, but there was a lot of, um, uh, like, members leaving um uh there were some kind of messed up um i think legal situations happening so the fact that flash forward 35 40 years and you are you know carrying on the banner um that says something because the band could have just you know gone the way of a lot of other artists but it it didn't there was only one band member that left actually at that time oh okay only one left F ironically and I, it's, it's for me, this is kind of like, this is an anomaly because I don't know of any other band whose lead singer left to be replaced, I, or I will say, by a much, much, much better singer. But I don't know of any other, other band whose singer left overnight, all of a sudden, big fallout, he left. And no one noticed. <laughs> I'm, 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 I think back about it now, and I, I mean, I'm sure we. So I'm sure last time we spoke about the fact that I've written a book based on my diaries. And yes. in my diaries, there's no mention of the fact that there is a mention of the fact that he left. Yes, there's no mention of the effect. Nobody. I mean, we had a fan club, loads of people you know, phone up the record company and you know the, the own fan club and everything going on. Right. I don't remember any kind of furore around? Oh well, you know he's left. What's going to happen with it? He left. Straight away, we got the singer that was our backing singer got promoted to lead singer because he was he was fantastic. Okay. Um, and we went on to bigger and better success, and no one even noticed it had left. And I think that's fantastic. That's brilliant. Yeah. Um, but that was the only change. And okay. as I said, we went on to bigger and better things. And because he was ironically talking about the seventy soul thing, because when he joined the back, when he was doing the backing vocals, and we would get to chat. I realised this guy's an Earth, Wind and Fire fan. Uh, yeah, he's Marvin Gaye. These are uh, things so that I, uh, yeah. when he joined the band as lead singer, we were all of a sudden able to do B sides, which would be like Abraham, Martin, and John. You know, oh, wow. uh, tracks of my tears, stuff like that. We do all these soul things that no one ever, ever knew we could do because musically we can do them, but you have to have a vocalist who can carry it. Right, right. And all of a sudden, this guy there he was doing these songs. And I thought, Actually, yeah, for me it was great. Wow. Um, so we went, yeah, we did like a, a version of Band of Gold for a film that was my favorite weird. party party. Yeah, we, we would never have been able to do that with the other singer, absolutely no chance on this earth. Yeah, isn't that something? And that that was actually that that particular track is still one of my ultimate modern romance favorites. Um, but I'm surprised that that one didn't do 
a lot better, whether it had been here in the States. Frida Payne did an amazing version of that, but I'll tell you, for a remake, you guys just totally rocked it. Do you know what's funny? Because I've never looked at it like that. It's, uh, I've never looked at it as, you know, what a great remake, you know. We, it was just, a, we were asked to do it for this film. We did it, you know. And I, funny enough, you're the second one in probably the last month, second person who said, oh, yeah, Band of Gold. Like, what? You actually know it? And I said, yeah, of course we know it. It's a great track. And like, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm quite shocked. Um, so, yeah, five, five still actually, like, it doesn't even come, there is no comparison really between that and the original. Um, but you mentioned something a minute ago, though. So, some of the other ones, like Tracks My Tears and the other one you just mentioned, are those available on releases somewhere? Abraham Martin and John. Yeah. Uh, I could send that to you, actually. I've got it. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I'd love to hear that. We didn't, it wasn't Tracks of My Tears, it was another one. Did. Um, just my imagination, not tracks on it. Just my imagination. Okay. Oh my I, I can send you these. I, I know I meant to when we spoke last time, but and I haven't forgotten. There's been so much going on, um, but I will definitely send them. Okay, and I can always. In actual, fact, in actual fact, I'll do it today. Okay, yeah, do the, yeah, because otherwise it'll be next year before uh, yeah. before we think about it again. Um, and I do remember you were talking uh, last time about the whole '60s thing because that was something else that we had in common because. You were a little bit more like soul, like Motown 60s, 70s, and I was definitely like that early 70s, um, that whole kind of like uh, Bobby Womack. There's just so much of that, like, funk and soul, um, being a kid in the suburbs of Seattle, Washington, growing up, um, you know, that I'll tell you, I, my heart, I've got such an affection for that. Um, you also mentioned disco, because they're definitely, I, I, modern romance definitely has disco elements throughout the whole thing, that whole salsa, upbeat dance. I wouldn't necessarily call it disco, but it was played in the discos, though. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I definitely had that element going through it. Um, in actual fact, one of, one of the reasons why I joined Modern Romance, and I don't know if this came up in the previous conversation, but my first encounter with Modern Romance, I didn't actually see them play. I walked into the Blitz, which is the, the club that all the... Right. I walked into the Blitz, and it was 11 o'clock at night, and there were you know, people were still there drinking or whatever, but a band had just finished playing. That's right, okay. Yeah, and I did realise it was more... I didn't know who they were. They weren't famous. But one of the reasons I went over and started to speak to them is I turned around to this guy, this random guy that was just sitting down, and I said to him, oh, sorry, mate, I said, what were the band like? Because I was disappointed that I'd missed the live band. I love watching live bands. Right. And um, I said, what were this band like? And he said, oh, yeah, they were really good. He said, they were pretty funky. And that word, oh, so I went over to speak to them and have a chat because I was in between bands, so I was looking for a spot anyway. Went over to chat to them to see if they know anyone that needs a drummer. Because at the time I was drumming, not singing. Right. Um, and the, I mean, the whole thing began from there. They, they called me a few days later, do you want to come and play percussion? I went, yeah, okay then, uh, might as well. And then before I got to play anything or see them, they phoned up back again and said, actually, you used to be the drummer of a, a band called Rocker G that I played in London. Um, it was a, 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 a bit of a cult band, you know, it was known in London and all the museums knew us. So you were the drummer of Rocker G? Yeah, okay. So he said, um, do you want to be our drummer? And I said, well, hang on, you've got a drummer. I spoke to him and gave him my number. That's how you got my number to ring me and say, kind of play percussion. No, 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 we wanted to get rid of him for ages. We were just looking for someone. 
he's on, he's on the way out anyway. And I said, well, I can't take the guy's job. They said, well, if you don't, someone else will. So you might as well. I, I, okay, then, yeah. Um, but that goes back to the origin of the story. story. The, the word, word funky, funky is why, why I, I was them. And when I went to see them, there was a kind of raw energy and there was a very funky feel. And that came primarily from the guitarist, Paul. Okay. Yeah, kind of funky kind of thing going about him. And I was right. like, yeah, I like that, yeah. Um, and that's what drew me to it. So I'm into that the whole funk thing, yes. Okay. What a chance, like one in a million chance meetings that was between you and the band, though. For it to be, especially because of the fact your timing couldn't have probably been worse that night. Initially, just because of the fact that you'd already missed the band, you didn't get a chance to see him play after all. But had it not been for your timing, though, we wouldn't be having this conversation more than likely. Absolutely. No, listen, my life would have been completely different because it's, it's one of those sliding doors moments. Because if uh, so many variables as well. I said to my friend that night, where should we go? And normally it'd be this club, this club. It could be any club. We were clubbing. I was clubbing every single night of the week, every night without you know, fail. And this particular night, I said, oh, should we go down to the Blitz? Yeah, let's go to the Blitz, see what's going on. Um, had we not gone there, had he have decided, had he been ill that night, had I decided I'll just stay home, so many things. I've gone to a different club. I just said, arrived at a different time, heard them play, but then I probably wouldn't have gone up to speak to them. It's only because they were packing up, and I thought, well, the I'll go and chat to them and see if they know anyone that's, you know, right. that needs a drummer that that plays their kind of music. Because I said, oh, do you know anyone that plays your kind of music that was a drummer? Because I'm into funk and so on. You know, um, so it's just one of those things. You kind of think if that hadn't happened, I mean, so many things. I wouldn't have met two members of the royal family throughout my life. I wouldn't have gone to Buckingham Palace. Oh, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't have met all the people that I met, Elton John, Rodgers, all these people. I would never have met any of these people. I mean, having said that, you kind of think, well, you might have gone out a, a week or a year later and bumped into Freddie Mercury and joined Queen, for example. Yeah, who knows, right? right. But having, having said that, before the modern romance thing, I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you before, I was in a, I was asked to join a band called Headquarters. They were a soul band. Okay. Um, all like local guys, all young black guys, very trendy, very hip, you know. Yeah. They've asked me, this white guy, to they, they auditioned me. One of, one and, of the biggest uh, compliments to join the band. As far as I'm concerned. One of, one of the biggest compliments. A bunch of guys yes. that are into their soul music is inbred. It's them, you know, the black guys. They've got the soul scene. And he turned, a guy turned around and said to me, he goes, do you know what? He said, I couldn't believe it. He said, for a white guy, you're, you're really funky. I went, yes, I've arrived. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is a compliment. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, because soul is just, I mean, you know, it, I think it's just part of their fiber. It's mm. part of their makeup. And, you know, so, yeah, you get complimented on whether it's your taste in that music or, you know, if, as a DJ, you know, if you kind of gravitate towards that or as a musician, you know, you play that. Um, yeah, you get complimented, um, you know, in that respect. And uh, it is a definite compliment. Um, I see where we've got uh, just a little bit over seven minutes. Um, once again, I do want to thank you for your time. We will... Uh, before we kind of start to wind down here, um, we'll definitely touch base again here soon um, so we can talk some more about the illustrations and stuff about your project. Um, getting uh, back to the interview at hand, though, um, what's uh, what's in store? Um, you said that uh, here in about another week or so, you've got another one of the 80s festivals coming up. Beyond that, um, what does the winner look like for Modern Romance? Um, well, after that, I'm going to, about a week later, I'm going to Scotland to finish some recordings that I've, that I've started and kind of left because things have been going on. And we, th we have to finish it right. Okay, so I've booked to go to Scotland on the 13th of November. That's already booked. Cool. Go and spend a few days, finish off the bits I'm doing up there and make a plan for next year for songs to be released and stuff. Nice. So that means, that means that there are some modern romance releases coming up. Oh, Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Awesome. How long has it been since anything was put out? Oh no, I put something out. Um, twenty twenty three. We put something out in twenty twenty three, right at the beginning. Oh, that's right. Yeah, actually, you did. Um, called Dayar. 
Okay, okay. And it, and it, um, it got tipped as, uh, it was the top tip of, on Amazon of the new Latin releases. Okay. I was like, oh, I like that. Yeah. Awesome. And that can be heard where? Um, I mean, it's obviously out. Uh, it's, on, it's on Spotify and all, all the platforms. Okay. It's okay. called Yara. Yeah. So um, yeah, before I forget, um, don't forget you can find, actually, if you put Modern Romance in your browser, um, otherwise you, you get a bunch of like modern, modern romance band, band that are modern because romance. otherwise you get a yeah, books and stuff. And, yeah. yeah, put in Modern Romance Band um, on um, your browser and it'll take you to a bunch of uh, uh, the YouTube um, stuff that's out there. But Andy's got a bunch of stuff out there that's definitely worth checking out. Um, if you're not that familiar with the band, this is a perfect time. Um, there's a lot out there to be able to uh, to be able to research and enjoy. Um, I didn't realize, or maybe I did. Yeah, I did too realize you were on Spotify. That's right. Um, but they can check that out as well. Um, okay, so that's okay. So new uh, stuff coming up uh, ne uh, later this year or this next year, I guess. Um, what? Uh, let's do a word to the world, Andy. We've got people that are tuning in tonight from who knows. Uh, Papua New Guinea, who possibly, um, who uh, or who, um, what, uh, what would your message be to anybody that's watching today? Do you know what? I've only got one message after everything that we've gone through. And I think, do you know what? Why can't we all just be nice? Really, just be nice to everybody. I'm talking about world leaders. Stop all the crap. Be nice to everybody. Stop trying to do one upmanship on everyone. And just, Get on with each other. It's just like after all we've been through the pandemic and people losing this person and that person and yeah, people dropping like flies because of this stupid like virus. Why can't we just go? Do you know what? That was a wake up call. Let's enjoy life. Let's just enjoy life because it's very short. Let's, let's just do what we want to do. Have fun with the people you love, and that that's how I live my life. I won't spend any time with people that I don't get on with because oh, you should do. No, I don't. I don't care if you're related to me. If I don't like you, I'm not going to get on with you. I'm not going to spend time with you. I'm going to spend time with the people I love, that I respect, whether they be friends, relatives. And because I, I would hate to think that the last thing I did before something happened, before I died, you know, in an accident or naturally, whichever the call it case is, I spent the night um, nodding and said, yeah, yeah, isn't it lovely? Yeah, spending time with people that you don't really want to be with. But no, I want to spend time with people I do want to be with that I love and have time for so if anything happens to me at least the last thing i did was spend time with these people with my kids with my friends with anyone so and that's how i did my life and i just think everyone should just do what they want to do you know obviously without hurting other people to do what they want to do get on and make an effort to is not be so horrid as I said, there's so much one up and ship who cares who's done this and that do what you want to do. Enjoy your life. And just get on with it. And don't be so horrid. That's my message. Stop being horrible and be just get on with each other. Oh, my gosh. There's some world leaders that I hope are really watching this tonight is all I can say. Um, will, it, will it make any difference? Hard to say. But, uh, no. And, you know, yeah, I mean, wishful thinking is that we'd uh, actually um, have it today or, you know, um, live in a place like that. Maybe someday. Um, but then again, though, maybe someday, you know, um, other things will happen, too. Maybe there will be world peace. Um, guys, you've been watching Convos. I'm here on the Groove Zone Network. I'm DJD Phoenix coming to you out of New Mexico. I've been hanging for a while tonight with Andy Kiriakou of uh, Modern Romance. Um, Andy was able to put aside a little bit of time. I'm going to just say right now that I think one of these days here in the somewhat near future, hopefully before a year passes, we should go for round three. Absolutely, yeah. Whatever just you want. Every time that we talk, it's like we're just starting to get into it, and then that buzzer goes off, and next thing you know, um, we're having to call it a day. So, well, listen, for, yeah. for your future, I, I'm not. A, I'm a, I'm a night bird. So if you wanted to do two, three o'clock my time, I'm up at that time anyway. I went okay. to bed at three thirty, four o'clock this morning. Yeah, you know, our time. Not a problem, and and you know we can we can trade off. You know, the time after. Yeah. you bet. You bet. Um, all right. So uh, with that being said, okay, I know I already asked you for a word to the world, but you want to do any shout outs to anybody real quick? Any last you has? 
Not really. I, my only shout out is I hope that all the people that are suffering in the world, I hope it stops soon because it's horrible. I send a shout out because the shout outs to people that are driving their cars and it, no, let's not do that. Let's do the shout outs to the people that are suffering and say, I hope it will stop for you. That's my shout out. No doubt. Because life is too short. Absolutely. What else is too short? Unfortunately, this show. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back after this. Uh, DJ D Phoenix with Andy Kiriakou of Modern Romance. We'll be right back. Andy, thank you so much. My pleasure. See you later, everybody. Have a good day. All right. On behalf of him, uh, good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. All right, my friend. Um,